in the following video series, we will be looking at squared functions and inequalities and their graphs and analyzing those graphs. So to start this, what we're going to do is we're going to focus primarily on the parent function. And the reason why we're going to focus on the parent function of the graph is because everything that we're going to be looking at will be a transformation from this parent function. And so we need to understand why the parent function is graphed the way it is and the different properties of the parent function's graph. And so if we have the parent function, y equals the function f of x equals the square root of x. So the first thing we're going to look at is the domain and range. You notice that your domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, and your range is y is greater than or equal to 0. And what helps us see this is this whole statement here of when it's not defined. Your graph is not defined when x is less than 0. And so my question is, why? Why is this graph not defined when x is less than 0, but it is defined when x is greater than or equal to 0? And the reason is it goes in the idea we are dealing with square root functions. What is the smallest number you can take the square root of and still graph on the real number coordinate plane? And the answer is zero. If I take the square root of zero, I get zero. But if I take the square root of negative one, I'm now dealing with imaginary numbers. And we cannot graph imaginary numbers on the coordinate plane. And so that's why our domain of the parent function starts at zero, zero. It allows us to work only with the real numbers, and it takes away all those imaginary numbers. And so that's the key to graphing, is to realize when does the graph start to go towards the imaginary? When do we have to cut it off? And it's when your expression inside the radical gets below zero. And so what's going to help us with this is how do you figure out you know, your starting point? of the graph. I mean, my starting point here is 0, 0. It does not go beyond that point. And so that is the starting point. And the way it works is based off of transformations. If I have my graph and I have the transformation y equals a times the square root of x minus h plus k, if I know that the smallest number I can have inside the radical is zero, the way you figure out your domain is to set the expression inside the radical. So to find the domain, you set the expression inside the radical to be greater than or equal to zero. Your range is based off of two things. It's based off your k value And it's based off of your a, because remember, if a is positive, the graphs can open up. If a is negative, the graphs can open down. So your graph will be going up greater than or equal to k when a is going to be greater than 0. y will be less than or equal to k when a is negative, less than 0. And so if we understand transformations, we understand all graphs. And what I want to look at is this. Notice that your range is based off your k. How can we make our domain based off our x? Right now, it's based off of the idea of x minus h is greater than or equal to 0. Well, if I solve for x, I would add h to both sides. And I would get x is greater than or equal to h. And so now I have setups, how my domain relates to h and how my range relates to y. And we'll dive deeper in this in a future video, but we're going to use this to help us with these three examples. Identify the domain and range. And so if I take a look, I'm going to write down a square root of x minus h plus k. What I like to do right off the bat is I'm going to graph the um, parent function. y equals the square root of x, just so I can see what's going on. So the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1.
the square root of 4 is 2. And so the original parent function is this curve right here. If I look at the one I'm trying to identify the domain range of, identify your h and k. That's the key. x minus 2, x minus h, that means h is 2. There is no number on the outside, so that means your k is 0. You know, a is positive 1, so the graph is opening upwards. And so how does this help us? Well, that tells me my starting point. H and K is what I refer to as your starting point for the graph, the coordinate H, K. So my starting point is the coordinate to zero. So my domain is the inequality. How does your x relate to your h. x has to be greater than or equal to h, so x is greater than or equal to 2. Your range is how does your y relate to your k. So my k is 0, and since your a is positive, you know the graph is opening up, so y is greater than or equal to 0. And so there's my domain and my range. x is greater than or equal to 2, and y is greater than or equal to 0. If I were to finish the graph, Notice I went to the right two units from the starting point, and so that is your actual translation. We had no vertical shift because k is zero, but my actual shift of the graph is right two units. So every point goes to the right two units. Every point goes to the right two units. So I would go to the right two units and plot here. And so you notice the graph just looks like it was slid to the right two units. And that is identifying the domain range. If you can identify A, H, and K, you have your domain and you have your range. You have your starting point. You have the graph of the function. So let's look at example two. Here we have F of X equals three times the square root of X plus four. And so same idea, I write down my transformation, a square root of x minus h plus k. And I identify each one. Here, a is 3. I mean, it's still positive, but it's large. It means your graph is going to increase faster. You know, h, we always have to learn, it's the opposite of what you see, because the formula says x minus h, but this says plus 4. So that means in order for it to turn into a plus sign, h has to be negative. And then k, there's nothing on the outside. k is 0. And so that gives me my starting point. And I'll refer to that as sp for starting point. It's the coordinate hk. So negative 4 is 0. My graph will start there. And if I go ahead and state my domain and range, it's going to relate to those h and k values. For your domain, x is greater than or equal to h, so x is greater than or equal to negative 4. For your range, y, since a is positive, the graph is opening up, so y will be greater than or equal to your k value, which is 0. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at this graph on my calculator to assist us with seeing our transformation and even looking at our domain and range and how we can help ourselves with the calculator. So if I go to my calculator, so I'm in my y equals, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my function, 3 square root of x plus 4. Now, if you have the old operating system, you will have a parentheses before you typed in your x. You're going to have to close the parentheses as well at the end of the square root. I have the new operating system, so I'm just going to get the right arrow to get out the square root. And so if I hit graph, we can see what happened. What happened to our graph is the original starts at 0, 0. You know, I went to the left four units for it. And so I can actually see the translation. I could even put the original one, if I want, my parent function, in y2. So y equals the square root of x. And now if I look, I can see my graph went to the left four units and 
it's increasing faster for it. The other thing I wanted to look at to assist us with understanding domain and range is go to your table, second graph. You notice if we look at y1, because that's our original, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 4. So if I go to negative 4, y is 0. Notice how my range starts at y is 0. But look what happens when I go to negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, and so on and so on. You get error. So your calculator even tells you. Now it says error, and the reason why it says error is because those are your imaginary numbers for it. And so we can see our starting point is negative 4, 0. So our calculator can assist us as well when looking at domain and range to make sure we even graph it right. So let's take a look. Last example is if I have a times the square root of x minus h plus k, what do I have? I have a as negative 1. And what does that tell us? That tells us it's going to reflect over the x-axis. I have an h value of 1. I have a k value of negative 4. And so what does this tell us? This tells us my starting point, sp, is the coordinate 1, negative 4. That's my graph is going to start. And so let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and graph. I am at 1, negative 4. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is my starting point. Your domain relates to the h value x has to be greater than or equal to 1. Your range relates to the y value. It relates to your k, so y, negative 4. However, we still have to keep in mind the graph is opening downwards, which now means if I were to look at this graph, it would be opening down like this. And so that means y has to be less than or equal to since it's opening down. When it was opening up, when a was positive, it was greater than or equal to. When it's opening down, y is less than or equal to negative 4. And you have your graph. And so if I want to describe this translation, I would say, hey, it reflects over the x-axis because a is negative 1 h is 1, so it went, you know, right, one unit, and then if I look at my k value, it's negative 4, it goes down four units. So if we identify h and k, it gives us our domain or range, it gives us our starting point, and it describes our translation, our transformation. And that is the key in the next video. We will practice more with identifying a, h, and k and stating our transformations. But the whole purpose of this one is to understand how domain and range relate to those values of the graph and how your domain relates to real numbers, how once you start to go into the negatives and the square root, you get the imaginaries. So you, before you move on, make sure you understand this idea of the domain range of square root functions.